Welcome to the third episode of CSUR tutorial series. In the last video, we have learned the basics of CSUR rules and modules, so now it's time to build a legitimate interchange. In this video, we will be building a four-level stack interchange and get you more familiar with the CSUR system. The CSUR road packs and other mods used are listed in the description down below. We will go through some very basic ideas of designing interchanges, introduce the transition module, and explain how CSUR modules are named. Besides, we will also cover some special tricks for building CSUR roads using the road tool and the move it mod. Stack interchanges, also called directional interchanges, are one of the most efficient types of road junctions. The first four-level stack interchange was built in Los Angeles in 1949, and now they can be seen all across the world including Houston, London, and Shanghai. Some of these interchanges have five or six levels including frontage roads and pedestrian overpasses, but the structures for free-flowing traffic usually take four levels. Before starting the construction, let's take a look at how these four levels of traffic are organized in the stack interchange. The exact order of these four levels will depend on the elevations of your roads as well as the terrain. The first level of the interchange is the roadways going straight. The second level is a pair of left turn ramps and a pair of right turn ramps. They take up two quadrants of the interchange and enter the road in the first level. The third level is another pair of ramps, taking up another two quadrants and exiting the road in the first level. The fourth level is the roadways of the other main road intersecting the first level. The interchange we'll be building connects two elevated highways, both of which have eight lanes in total. You can notice that they aren't perfectly straight and intersecting in a 90 degree angle. This is also the reason why we need to design our own interchanges instead of copying one from the workshop. For an interchange with many levels, it's a good practice to determine the height of each level beforehand. Our first level will be at the height of 8 meters to allow for building frontage rows on the ground. Then within the interchange, we use a 6 meter spacing between each two levels. This will give us a 4 meter clearance, which will be usually enough for trucks and buses. After building some small pieces of rows at the height of each level, we can easily align the heights of ramps using them. Another preparation work is to determine where the ramps should be split and merged. According to our level organization, these ramps will go up or down by at the most two levels. So with a 6% slope, a length of 200 meters will be a good choice. So we can drag an arbitrary road by 200 meters from the center at each corner to find where we shall place the ramp modules. Typically, we want connecting modules to be shorter than the regular roads, so we use electrics road tools to break up the longer segments. Before bringing out the CSUR modules, let me briefly introduce how CSUR modules are named. For example, now the road selector is already in two-way mode, and I've selected lanes 1, 2, and 3 at both ends. Then the name given in the thumbnail of the road is 6DR. To understand why it is called as such, we just need to know that the name of a CSUR road comes in three parts. The first part is the number of lanes in a roadway. In case two opposite roadways are symmetric, we combine them into one, so there's number 6. The second part is the direction designator. The letter D indicates there are two symmetric roadways, and the letter R means each roadway is located at the right side of the center, separated by a median. The third part, which is omitted here in this road, is the location of the rightmost lane in each roadway. Here we've selected 1, 2, and 3, so the rightmost lane is at number 3, and so the complete name of the road should be 6DR3. However, the rightmost position is the same as the number of lanes in each direction, therefore the position number is omitted for simplicity. Similarly, if we switch to the one-way mode, the lane count will be divided by 2 and the D letter will be removed, giving the name of 3R which is abbreviated from 3R3. And if we drop the first lane of it, the rightmost lane is not the same as the lane count anymore. So we need to add back the position number, giving 2R3. A special case is two-way undivided roads. The road has a single roadway at the center instead of the right, so it's called 6DC. From now on, we will refer to most of the CSUR roads by their names, which would be very convenient especially when there are lots of roads to work with. Change the two main roads into 6DR, and now let's build a splitting and merging point leading to the ramps. For traffic entering the interchange, we already have three lanes going straight. 
and we need two extra links for the ramp, one going left and the other going right. So after the ramp module, we will have a roadway with three lanes and another roadway with two lanes, separated by half of a lane. And the outer two lanes at the end of the ramp module are 4p and 5p. Ramp modules don't change the total number of lanes, so the module should begin with one roadway with five lanes. Switch back to one-way mode, and then we can upgrade the existing road segment into this ramp module and do it for all four legs of the interchange. From the name of the module, we can also see that when two ends of the module are different, an equal sign is used to connect the beginning and the end. And when there are more than one roadway, we just use the three-part rule to name each roadway from inside to outside. So the module reads 5R to 3R2R5P. Now the ramp module needs to start with 5 lanes, but we only have 4 lanes in each direction before it. So we need to use a different type of module in CSUR, Transition. The transition module adds or removes lanes to the roadway, but it doesn't do merges or splits. For the road packs currently available in the workshop, only one lane is added or removed at a time, and the lanes should be aligned to either side. So to expand our 4-lane road to a 5-lane road, we check the 5th lane on the top based on the 4R module, and this will give us the transition module which correctly connects to the ramp. After placing the transition module for all four legs, we can finish the other direction, which is first a ramp module to merge and the transition module to reduce a lane. We can either select the lanes directly or click the invert button on the road selector. When building a CSUR module right opposite to another, we will need to pay special attention to where we need to click using the road tool. If we click on the opposite module, then the module being built will be connected to that one, which is not the desired result because it will create ghost intersections. The correct way to do it is to click on the empty part of the scene, and after the road is built, a dead-end sign appears, indicating it's not connected to the opposite module. When selecting CSUR nodes and segments using Move It, like when we are aligning heights here, we can just click on the model part of the road to select it. Even if the overlay circles give the exact same position for two opposite modules, with the CSUR patches, MoveIt can still distinguish between them. Then easily, we can finish all the modules leading to the second and third levels. Next, we build the center part of the interchange, where we have four layers of roads stacked on one another. Align the heights of the two main roads to the first and fourth levels, and we'll build two pairs of left turn ramps in the middle levels. After the modules we've just built, we have lanes 4P and 5P available for the ramps. So for now, we can just use the 2R5P to fill in the center. First, build the road roughly according to the angle of the turn, and use Move It to copy them into the middle. For the current version of Move It, it's normal that the model will disappear when using the copy mode. Apart from Move It, another way to align the height of a road is dragging from an existing road, and the game's road tool will remember the height where it starts from. With the stack center done, we can remove the unnecessary pieces of roads and connect the center to the splits and merges. And now we've almost finished all left turn ramps. To make the interchange more compact, we make the ramps follow the same curve as the main roads. When you're using Move It, you can press the Alt button to snap the segment into 180 degree angles and smooth curves, which is particularly useful when working with CSUR. For the top and bottom levels, only the segments in the center are on the correct height, so we need to align the slopes for the main roads. Now the only part left for the interchange is the right turn ramps. Break up the segments leading to the left turn ramps to place modules for the right turn. We will split the two lanes into one lane going left and another lane going right. Here we use the ramp module by splitting to the left 
so the 2R5P becomes a lane of 4 and another lane of 5P. In case the road selector says not found, you may try both the right split and the left split, and there's almost always a module available. Build the other ramp module where the right turn merges, upgrade the left turns into 1R4, and we can just connect the right turn using 1R5P. As you can see in the footage, CSUR needs no adjustment at all except for the 180 degree snapping with the off button. And with all of the lane markings built in, CSUR is tremendously faster in building realistic interchanges than any other type of road. After changing the module used for the left turn ramps, they've gone farther away from the center. You can definitely leave it as it is, so we will move them closer for a better look. These are just dragging the nodes and segments, so I'll play at a very fast speed before it's done. All of the rows are done, and we only have a couple more things to do. The main road has a filled median on the interchange and before the interchange, but the median is empty where we use the transition and ramp modules. In this case, we can search for CSUR middle and find it, and use the median network to fill them up. Sometimes the striped lines in the ramp module are not in the correct direction, which should be pointing outwards to the direction of traffic. We can use the texture flip tool in Electric's roll tools to fix that. Now our four level stack interchange has been completed. In this video, we will only cover the interchange itself, and you are free to design what's below or surrounding it, either city blocks or natural sceneries. If you like this video or like CSUR, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to check out more stuff about it in my channel, and see you next time.